Hello and welcome to another edition of the FlowTrack podcast. Our email is flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. My name is Lincoln Shrike, joined once again by Kevin Sully. And we are pleased today to be joined by two-time Olympian, six-time national champion. It is Lopez Lamong. Lopez, how are you doing today? I am well. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we ask this to everyone that joins us in this period of, of no sports during during this unfortunate pandemic, but uh, how has your training been going? How have you had to adapt to this current situation? Well, first and foremost, I think I would like to, uh, you know, congratulate to you, Lincoln, for, uh, for your new home. And uh, how's your family? <laughs> no. Everything is going well, okay. And, uh, <laughs> and Kevin, thank you so much for, uh, for having me in this incredible podcast. And um, so mm -hmm. I've been hearing about the house for a while now with uh, okay. with you guys' podcast. And I hope <laughs> you're doing well. I hope everybody's doing well and sheltering in place as we are doing as well. So um, yeah, um, I'm really, really, really honored to be here and um, to, be, to be with you today, just discussing a variety of stuff. And yeah, I'm happy to be here today. What's your training been like? relative to what it would be like if you had a normal season what are you doing each day for your runs you know the obviously we all go through this uh covid 19 uh situation um you know it's a it's a ter it's a terrible thing it's like with all the athletes are going through right now that are uh, you know we train so hard we looking forward to be able to make this olympic team and and all of a sudden that is you know something kind of like hindered and like we can we can go compete we can do what we uh we sacrifice ourselves to be to go do and um so yeah it's just adjustment right now and trying to do things like we will never do before kind of like the training is a little bit uh if we got like, kind of like running by yourself without the teammates it's really tough but uh the workout we can try to increase to see the, what we can be able to do uh to replicate uh for next year because you know you don't want to be just living the uh, kind of like putting all the, the season in the drainage and just say like okay it's over but uh we're still training we're still uh focusing on what we we want to work on a uh, few things that we wanted to work on some guys are like if you go through a lot of bank like kind of uh, injuries you got that mm -hmm. done and uh, so yeah I, I mean it's just like an adjustment period um and hopefully we can be able to go outside and and train and and be be with the, with the crowd again and uh, and do what we do the best. If if races do come back, and I know that would be a luxury, and it's hard to think about that. But if races do come back in this year, in twenty twenty, be it August, September, would you be interested in getting on the track or the roads and, and doing a race this year? Yeah, I think I think it's um, we, I am dying to be able to to be on a track right now and to just to to do something uh you know just the fall it's been amazing winter it's been great um so basically like all the cylinders were clicking in perfectly and uh, just coming out of the uh october uh late world championship you know you still have that and you know amazing uh you know build up and you know the, the shape that you 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 had and um so I, I was just like, you know, just to, it's not just only me, like the whole Bowman Truck Club, we, we had something that we wanted to be able to go out there, like, just go to Hayward Field and come through the Bowman Curve and ready to go. And, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's, if that happens, if, if, the, if the race happens, I think, I think the fans are, are dying to be able to see us go out there and line up and, and run and compete and, and just, um, give the fans what what they've been waiting for because everybody want sport right now we want a mm -hmm. sport right now because you know even like even sometimes when i'm bored i go through the floor track and check for like my you know few races that was happening a while ago or something like that it just it, it feels good and i think it's uh it's it's time to be able to go out and like if it is october um i don't know it, it have to be like okay how long can you prolong the season to be? And uh, if it's, mm -hmm. when do you need to kind of like shut it down and get ready again for the next year? But uh, if if things are open up and that is a races and and you know an incredible result, like, sure, I think I think that would be an incredible time to go out there and like give the the fans 
the you know the the show they've been they've been waiting for for a while how do you think 2021 will be different for athletes like yourself given that there is this unprecedented situation and it will be again another olympic year what changes will we see do you think from athletes such as such as yourself and how they approach 2021 yeah, I think the uh, 2021 will be very interesting because a lot of people are dying to compete right now. And uh, I think we will not take things for granted. And I think it's, uh, it's, it'll be an opportunity. They, I mean, for me, obviously, they're like, I love being on the track. I love to compete because it's not just um, competing for myself, competing to be able to make the teams or something like that. There's something that you get out of your like, like just how to, to be able to gauge how last year was better, how was your last year performance compared to this year performance. And, you know, it's always good to be able to go see, to see, to see that happen because um, it's, you know, it also gives you a little bit of gauge, like going to the Olympic year. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I think in twenty one, um, everybody will be in a super, super shape because <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you, you're just training so hard and, uh, and I think it's, it's going to be a lot of fast times coming up. It's going to be uh, people will be excited to compete and, and travel the world again and, and shake hands and like, you know, and just be the team again. You know, I think uh, 2020, 2020 just really, it gives us a check, you know, and to be able to see the athletes who are like well dedicated and the people who, who the, you know, kind of separate from the, from those people like, um, because right now this is the time that to be able to like, uh, how, like, go go to the like, uh, what can I say like, because you know I'm I grew up as a farmer, because like this is a time like to be able to go out like, alternate your your crops you know like okay mm. last time you, you know you last time you like, <laughs> you harvested the uh, corn maybe it's time to be able to do some beans and maybe rotate and see what what the soil can be able to give it to you and I and. I, I could probably stop at that. <laughs> well, I like the metaphor. I, yeah. <laughs> I like both corn and beans. Uh, what I was going to say, uh, we know, like you mentioned, racing in the traditional sense not happening, but I've seen on your social media, you've been posting about doing some virtual racing to raise money for South Sudan. Uh, can you provide us some details? Oh, what, tell us some more about uh, the virtual racing and trying to raise money for South Sudan. Yeah, um, so like obviously, apart from my training and my 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 job, I um, I always use my platform to be able to like you know spread the word and and allow people like basically to see where I came from. Uh, we've been partnering with the World Vision, uh, raising money for raising money for the clean water in South Sudan. And then we are so fortunate also to be able to partner with the uh, Huta Coast, uh, basically the longest relay in the world. And also like to kind of supplement that to be able to raise money for the people of South Sudan. So we, uh, so we did, we are doing a, a, vir a virtual like, um, you know, people to sign up on the, uh, the Huta Coast uh, to run 10K, 5K, all the way to um, half marathon to a marathon to be able to like, you know, and to be able to run with our team to, uh, to raise money for South Sudan. So if you sign up, then, uh, you know, uh, five, $5 will go to like clean water in South Sudan. I think that is an incredible thing. And without like, without just kind of like, okay, everything is shut, but you know, there is no sport, but like, you can be able to like, to do that kind of sport, bring it people together, bring the, the running uh, world to, together still, and to do something better, like, more powerful than yourself what, what what you know what you will do and so like i think um if people are listening to this please um join me with my with my course and to be able to like go out there and sign up for either five five k or uh whatever it is you need you need to like to run and compete um we'll be running and uh yeah so just to raise money for you know people that you know they don't have much uh, in the world, because uh, especially with this disease, uh, people, the more vulnerable people in South Sudan and uh, in the world, like they still don't have clean water, they still have don't don't have anything uh, in life. So, 
And I think we can be able to use this uh, up here or so-called like gap year to be able to do something better in the world. And are you volunteering for the marathon leg or, or am I, is that not correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I probably, I should not, um, <laughs> advertise on this, um, on this uh, conversation, but <laughs> Whatever happens, maybe if somebody sponsor me, sure, I, I I can be able to do that. But I don't want I don't want Jerry to listen to this. Okay, like what's going on? <laughs> what, what, you you say something about marathon, but yeah, he doesn't want me to say anything about marathon yet at this particular moment. So yeah, I'll That's run I, I'll run something. I'll run something longer, but maybe not the marathon. Yeah, yeah. name marathon. Okay. okay, all right, fair enough. Well, you've already you've already showed us your range from. 800 all the way up to 10,000. So it makes sense that one day we might, are you going to be like Meb out there or Bernard the God in your, in your forties running marathons? I mean, those, those are the incredible people. Those are the two people that have really inspired me so much. You know, I, I remember in high school, I was reading a magazine about Bernard, you know, and I cut like in the middle of the magazine that is an incredible like picture in, in upstate New York and Syracuse. And, I always wanted to be like them, but I, I didn't like to work so hard to be able to be like them. And uh, so <laughs> just to see, to see Map, to see Laga, um perform as like all the way to the late age of, of their co competition, like it's something like, it gives me joy and give me that, like that hope, like if I take care of myself, I take care of my stuff and um, basically amazing people uh in my team uh then i can probably prolong my season to be where they are because i always tell them like hey i'm i'm old in the group but like i like to kind of like feed out of your energy the young young energy um uh, mm -hmm. to be able to like make me excited to do to do good and at the end of the day i want them to be able to see that like if they can do everything they can they can prolong their their careers and you know to like 13 seasons and whatever and beyond so well speaking of of long careers uh, i'm sure you saw the news that dathan ritzenheim decided to to retire today uh he's a couple years older than you do you have any memories of i don't know how many times you guys' paths cross you were probably in some of the shorter stuff when he was in the longer stuff but did you, do you have any memories uh, of watching ritz compete well well i i watched him race um i think i think with 2012 uh where he ran, they didn't make the Olympic team in 2012, right? The Olympic mm -hmm. trials? Yeah. Yeah. 10,000. 10,000 on, on that big rainy day. I remember that rainy, it was a raining and pouring rain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are the people like, these are the people that inspire me. These are the people that like, they do this for, not for themselves. They do it for people like myself. And uh, just to see those guys like, just, you know, running and you know even using their platform to be able to inspire the young people like like myself and the rest of the people like you know po that followed me like that's what the tr track and field is, is that's what the sport is supposed to be you know you're doing it to be able to other people to be following like okay i want to be like this so and so you know and dating is in a sport it's an incredible it's a you know the people like you can you can sit down with them and it will tell you everything. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, it will kind of like guide you to where you need to be. And um, so I, I'm really, really happy that like he did everything. And uh, he also coached a little bit as well. And uh, I, I'm sure if he retires like that, it will prolong his running career to be able to like just inspire other people. Maybe he will go coaching and things like that. And it will bring a lot of other athletes to, to the game as well. So, you know, and, I just kind of say like thank you Dayton for what you uh the impact you put in a track and field and um you know we the you know Hayward field will miss you but um I hope you come back and and share the, the journey with us again Lopez you mentioned multiple athletes there that Dayton along with Bernard who inspired you over the years I'm curious if there's one specific athlete whether when you were young or and another athlete that you competed against that maybe inspired you the most or just as your favorite athlete ever to compete against do you have one specifically yeah i do well i um i remember 
I was the biggest athlete ever made the um, the Foot Locker Nationals in 2004. That team. And uh, so we went to Balboa and, they, they, you know, Nike brought a lot of athletes. And I remember one person who gave me an autograph. And this man is Alan Webb. Alan Webb gave me an autograph. And I kept that autograph next to Bunala Gap picture on my wall. And uh, and I've been just just seeing him and reading his book and um, you know doing all these things like kind of like scratching my head. It's like, can I be like this guy? I don't think I can be able to be like this. I think people are just born in, incredible athlete, you know, like Alan Webb. And um, so in 2008, when I ended up like you know kind of like wanted to continue with my next level to be able to make the Olympic team, I ran with them. And I remember I was sitting with, with them and doing a little bit like a, a conference before the, uh, it was me, Bernard and, and, uh, and Alan. And just for him to just to say my name, it's like, you know, Lopez is an incredible athlete. He can be able to like, he has an opportunity to make this team and all that. And, and I hope I could have, I wish I could have listened to him, like not to do 800 meters and kind of double 800 and, and 1500 meters, but like, it just to be able to line up with somebody who gave you autograph when I was still in high high school, and now like you run with them, it gives me really amazing confidence that like this is the if you listen to yourself, you listen to people that uh, build you up, your coaches, your family, and 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 people around you, you can do anything you want. You can be the person. You can be who you think you 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 you, you dream to be, and um, so I think it's um. You know, somebody like Alan Webb is, you know, even today, until today, you know, still my great friend. And um, he's still, some, you know, sometimes just like looking at me like, man, you still continuing, man. That's incredible, man. Just continue doing what you're doing. And, you know, and I think it's fantastic. And um, so those are the people like one day when I hang, hang the shoes, I would like to like reach out to them and say, hey, you know, and, you know, just your word, small little word that you gave me. It, it propelled me to go and just to reach higher and higher. Just getting back to the the Olympic question with the delay, and you know you've had the second thirties. You've really seemed rejuvenated the last couple of years. Did you feel like kind of extra robbed of a season, knowing that you're 35 now and it's possible this could be your last Olympic cycle? So delaying it by a year could negatively impact you did you look at it at all that way um no i just look at it like how the body how my body works you know and i how i kind of if everything is dialing the way it is i, I think i can be able, i still i can still make that team it will be hard it will be very hard for sure but um it needs you know, you gotta put a lot of work. You gotta put a lot of work into it, and you gotta also have that belief, and that like you can do anything. And and um, so, if you believe, if you have that belief that you can make this team, and you listen to you, your your coach, and you, you put everything there, and I think uh, you, you can still make the team. And um, but, I mean, obviously, right now, I I wish. It could have we could have had like Olympic team right Olympic game right uh, Olympic qualifier right now because you know uh, the marathon is now they're gonna come back next year they will be ready to go they, it'll be like those are the people like they, those are the, like the most expensive customers in the world because those guys are gonna come out with like <laughs> you know hey we need to make this team because we missed the other team you know I put that in my mind obviously and mm. it, it, even all those teams. Every team next year is going to be hard. It's going to be, it's going to be a fight all the way to the tape. And uh, whoever break the tape, make it, you know, will, will be able to make that team. So it, that's you. I can you can't take anything for granted right now. And um, so, and I'm just going to see like everybody who I don't I don't know in the ten thousand meters maybe will be like twenty two people or, or thirty people in line, and they are all capable of making the team. And so I. I think I'm just going to go out there and do what I do the best and, you know, train very hard and listen to what, you know, the script, how my, my season was, you know, last year and, 
and um, trained so hard this year to be able to like to help me and um, kind of like up to the next year. Lopez, so you're saying that the 20, making the team in the 10,000 is now going to be extra hard because all the marathoners who would have had to, who didn't make the team now have an entire year to prepare. Is that what you're saying? That's what's going to make this 10,000 team even harder to make? Exactly. I, I call them like the most expensive customers because they have something to prove now in, in a, on a track. And uh, I think, I mean, if anybody out there thinking like these 10,000 meters or 5,000 meters is going to be easy to make is delusional. That's for sure. And I don't, I, you know, I don't know anybody out there will be saying that thing because, you know, those guys, they will come back, they will be training and they will be ready to, to go. And um, so it'll be fun, though. It'll be fun. Well, I know one of the matchups that everyone's going to be looking forward to seeing, we don't know if it's going to be in 5,000 or if it's going to be 10,000, but it involves you and Paul Trelimo. You guys have been going back and forth on social media now for, man, it's, it's been like a year, it seems like. Can you tell us how that all that all started? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, you know, let me tell you something. That I think is running is incredible, and um, I do I do what I do because it's not just making the team or it's not um, you know making X amount of Olympic teams or something like that or having like maybe some few words here and there with with the competitors or something like that. I do things because. The people who come to the track, they come to see the sport. And they're also, I have a lot of fans who come there to see me. And and they've been following me. And the follow my it's not like, okay, I'm going to see Lopez run or something like uh race and make the team or something like if not, then I'll be disappointed. These are the people that will come back to the track no matter what. And they because either they read my book, Running for My Life, and they want to go with the journey and follow what that journey is, what Lopez think uh, in his mind or something like that, because I came a long way. But I think uh, Paul is an incredible, amazing athlete. You know, he's, he's been, make, you know, held so much medals and things like that. I think, you know, I admire him. I admire him so much because he's, you know, uh, he brought a lot of medals to to our country and made us who we are as American. And um, but we also compete. We also compete to be able to make the team. And um, so when we line up, it's a competition. I, I I hope when we finish the race or something like that, it's good also to be able to shake hands and wave at the crowd, the people who come to see us and support us. Now we become one team, just like what we did. Uh, with uh, with Elu Kipchoge, and when Elu Kipchoge want to go break two hours in marathon, uh, Paul Chalimo and the rest of the some of the American uh, delegates were there representing our our, our country, and um, we all went there to for one mission and one mission only to be able to help Elu Kipchoge break two, and that is the team. That is what we, we we are here for because sometimes it's okay to swallow our pride and. Uh, and help somebody else to be able to um, to go and accomplish something incredible. I think, uh, um, it, you know, I've been competing with a lot of people. I competed with like, I competed with Rob. I competed with so many, so many people. And yeah, I, I always wanted to beat people. I want to, and they also want to beat me as well. And uh, I think whatever happens on the track is always to me personally. Is always I live on the track and. I don't, I don't, I don't carry that to uh, to the next level or something like that. And and you know, I think obviously when I meet when I meet people, twelve of us on a track lining up, and I think it's good to be able to just go out there and like, you know, you wait for the gun and whoever break the tape is a champion. And I, whoever beat me, I will always write, r rally next to that person and say, hey man, you know, congratulations, you beat me, incredible. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna like you know I I tip my head to you and you do an amazing job and so I I don't think that is I don't think that is any beef uh, 
you know, with me and Chilim. I think it's uh, like, I think the media is hyping things up. You know, I think uh, <laughs> that's just me. Like, I think it's, um, you know, I think it's good for all of us because it's good for the sport. And so like next time when Chelimo and I, we, we lighting up maybe hopefully next to each other because everybody will be talking about Lopez and Chelimo, you know, getting up. People will come up and watch the race. You know, I think that's great, mm -hmm. and uh, and and so it's it's a it's a great thing, and I you know I I love him, and you know I I hope he loved me too, and uh, so I, <laughs> so I think it's 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 a it's a good it's a good thing to be able to have that kind of like a sport because obviously like you saw Jim Ryan and uh, and Kano was had you know Kip Kano had that mm -hmm. also the you know the, the thing, and it was what happened was like a, a sport was went way up and it's a good thing so i think it's uh you know that there's there's no beef and if if it's there it's a good thing it's a it's a beautiful beef because all of us want to be champion and he's a comp he's very competitive i am very competitive therefore you put two competitive together and and guess what i think the uh the the fans and, and the sport thrive so it's a good thing yeah I I know you you mentioned the media and we are of course a part of that and, and a guilty party for somewhat hyping this up but I do I do have to ask you I don't I don't want you to deflect all of the blame for hyping this up when you did post one of the best I think memes I've ever seen with the Chihuahua in a lion's costume and I know you're just having fun with it of course but give us the backstory why did you decide the 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 chihuahua in alliance costume uh did you go through multiple iterations maybe some rough drafts of what you wanted to post on instagram and then went with that how did that all unfold for you i mean lincoln you like you like dogs right you like a dog i love dogs yeah okay yeah. do you have a pet do you have a, a dog pet right now i i don't i have a four-year-old so kind of the same but yeah but <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I think it's um, you know, I I like dogs and I it it, it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> something that I I thought it that that way seriously. Okay. And um, I just thought like, hey, you know, I think it's um, you know, we just finished the indoor and um, and we got a big race coming up and I obviously I wanted to go tonight a USA championship. But you know, obviously Jerry said, Well, we don't want you to go to the USA championship because even if you made a team, you're not gonna go to the to, to the world championship. I don't, I don't wanna be taking somebody's spa and uh, going to China for the for the indoor championship. But therefore like it was all planned out that we're gonna go to like um we go to Washington uh to run three thousand meters and come back here and and get ready for a race in um in Boston, you know, I wanted to run two races, all 3000 meters. And so, so like, yeah, I think it was just like, okay, I, I go out there and I follow you guys so much. I go out there, I'm watching floor track and, you know, obviously like, I, I see this interview that like, oh, something like that about, you know, between Lopez and you or something like, and then I heard something, maybe like I miss misheard a little bit about like, oh yeah, like he's been doing all things bragging, something about bragging, and then bring it up, something like, which is fantastic. I was like, okay, it, that, this is what you guys do, like you know, in a you know, in like in a media zone. When you come in, like everybody's still kind of hype, and they're like, hey, by the way, what do you think about this? And and um, obviously he said what he said, like it's a good thing, but I. Mm -hmm. I brought this up because I was like, ah, man, I wish I could have been there to like to run with them in 3000 meters. But, uh, I mean, I can't go deeper than that, but I think it's, you know, I think the, the dog with the, with a lion costume, <laughs> it speaks for itself, I think, <laughs> you know, it, it was just a fun thing, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fun thing. And I, I mean, obviously like it was, I didn't think way too much about that because hopefully if I could have sat down and really think about it, it could have, it could have been something different to be able to go after Paul Chelimo, but like, it was just something, you know, whatever, but uh, yeah, it's, don't, don't, don't look into, too much into it. <laughs> well, just to be clear, it was Kevin 
who asked the question to Paul. He well, was the one doing the interview. Well, so if you, let me, you have anybody let me, to blame. Let me, let, me de- <laughs> let me defend myself. This I remember this specifically. <laughs> this is the question I asked because I wasn't trying to start – I wasn't trying to start stuff. I – I'll admit, I'm very entertained by this because we don't see this much back and forth interaction, especially between distance runners. And I agree it's good for the sport. Mm -hmm. I literally said, you can go back and listen to the tape, Lincoln. Go back and listen to the tape. I literally said, are you excited to race Lopez this year? Are you excited to race Lopez this year? I didn't add anything else in there, and I let him take it from there. And then he went into – he said his piece, which was – last year was my off year. Um, Did he say he got lucky? Was that what happened? He got lucky, right? Um, and he bet I'm, I'm going to come stronger next year. Basically it was Lopez. I agree with you. This is great for the sport. The number, if you guys run at the Olympic trials next year in the same event, the number one rivalry that track fans will be paying attention to won't be in the hundred. It won't be in the 200. It will be two guys in the 5,000 or two guys in the 10,000. And isn't that crazy? Right, we're so used to everybody with the with the all the attention on that mono and mono stuff on the sprints, and you guys have managed to to pull that away. So I commend both you and Paul. Oh, it's fantastic! I I, I respect Paul as well for bringing that up because I think the sport needs it. The sport needs this, and um, it's you know he's in the paper. I am not in this level, and uh, I think. You know, I also like, I, I would like to even like, he will be my admirer as well. Like how do you perform so good in a world stage? Because you have silver medal, you got bronze medal. You like, you did all these things. That's incredible. That's amazing. And for all of us, like, you know, because we are all wearing the cloth of a nation and we represent USA, red, white, and blue. And, and Paul just amazing and like, you know, it. I just hope out out there somebody, a kid, will say like, "Man, I want to be like Paul Chalimo. I want to just go out there, like, really get into it, and you know, fight all the way to the line." You know, I think it's a fantastic thing. You know, and 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 I think like also for you to get there and perform really well, you need a little a little homegrown brother brotherly kind of like you know a little a hey, I'm. Obviously, Paul's like, hey, I'm better than you or something like that. And I say, hey, by the way, I beat you. You know, why don't you not like, give me that 12, you know, 12 months of my freedom until you beat me again? You can be able to go back and say, hey, I won again. You know, and I, I would say, hey, you know what? You won one, I you won two, and I won one, you know? So, so, so something like that, we, we it's all is all like, you know, it's a dining table talk for all of us. You know, I think it's a good thing. But if we go, we take that to the to the next level, we're like, okay, now we become a team. Let's do it to like, to represent our nation. Let's inspire the young people, young young of the athletes to be able to like, think like, instead of thinking about like going to sprints or going to basketball or football, why not, you know, go back to the track because track also is a sport. It's an incredible sport that is, you know, here and there that is like competition out, out there, you know, instead of like, just like, oh, okay, that, that doesn't matter. So-and-so is gonna win. Except, you know, because everybody mm-hmm. have opportunity to win, you know, and I think it's a good thing. Well, now I'm worried that you guys like each other too much. We'll have to check with Paul on this because <laughs> you're saying too many nice things about about him. <laughs> yep. I, I, obviously, for me, I don't have anything uh, with, with like in a sport. You know, I, I, you know, I, I don't have any uh, bad, you know, bad feelings when somebody do well, I, I want to be able to like rise them up. You know, I will take you all the way to like, you know, I will raise you up all the way to the sky because you did an amazing job. I want to be also in the sky. I want to fly with you. I want to be there. Take me with you. I think it's a good thing. And it perhaps doesn't hurt that you get to be uh, the reigning US 5,000 and 10,000 meter champion for another year or two. That's, that's an added bonus, right? You get to 2020, 2019 to 2021. You get to hold on to that for, for a little bit longer there. Um, I, I want to know your Instagram, not only famous for what we just spoke about, but your, your abdomen. Are the abs still doing okay in the, in the wake of uh, no racing? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's uh, I I try to keep my my physical fitness to the par, 
because I think uh, I like myself too much in the mirror, you know, because every time <laughs> when I go shower and I look at myself, I'm like, okay, I talk to myself. It's kind of weird, you know, I'm like, I'm a weird guy. So I was like, hey, I want to I want to I want to do a little bit more of this. I want to do all these things. So I'm trying, but uh, I mean, I will show you how they how will look, but because of the people <laughs> watching the show, we need to keep it PG-13. That's true. That's true. Yeah. What's no, the routine? I, we... How many crunches are you doing a day? Um, you know, I just obviously like the, the gym is all closed out here. I was in Texas by the way. It's, it's okay? Is it open? Uh, well, uh, it's open, open in Texas? we don't, we don't Not want yet, it to be. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, I'm, you know, I, I, um, you know, USA track and field has been amazing, been amazing. Uh, they, uh, gave me a little, like $400 to buy some gym equipment and I spent that wisely. And, um, so I got some gym things like, you know, kind of like a free way to like that in my house. And so I'm just trying to like, you know. Uh, get things going, and I think the you know the, the apps are all, they're there, but I don't want to be showing them until next year, 2021. I think 2021 is going to be a good one. 2021 yeah. is going to be a great year. It's it seems like it. I couldn't have asked for a better better answer than that. Well, Lopez, uh, you've been entertaining as always. Thank you so much for your time. We wish you the best of luck. And uh, for those of you watching this or listening to this, I encourage you. Lopez was also in another video for us where he joined Matt Tegenkamp and Andrew Bumbleo to talk about your famous Peyton Jordan race from 2012, which we didn't get to here. But if viewers want to see you talk about that, you can uh, listen to that video as well. Lopez, uh, again, thanks so much. Have a great one. Thank you. You guys too. Thank you. All right. We'll see you later.